Hi everyone, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. In this video, we're going to learn the cooperative one to four player game, XCOM The Board Game, designed by Eric Lang and published by Fantasy Flight Games. Here, players will be working as a team to stem the tide of an alien invasion, but each player will have their own unique role and distinct responsibilities that only they can fulfill, as the game, along with the companion app, throws challenges and threats at them which must be managed in real time. Only by working together as a team will you be able to prevent the invasion and save the Earth. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up the game, unfold and place the board in the center of the table. Now assign each player to one of the four unique roles as indicated by these cards. Each player will have a unique set of responsibilities, which are summarized here, and a unique icon that will help you distribute the starting materials. With only three players, it's recommended that one control both the central officer and commander roles. In a two-player game, it's recommended that one player be both the commander and chief scientist, and the other control the remaining two. In a single-player game, it'll be your job to manage all the responsibilities. Each player will get a starting set of assets, which shows their matching icon on the back and in the top left hand corner. These should be placed face up by the appropriate player. And if you're the commander, you'll have a selection of assets that show a variety of different continents. You won't be using all of these in the game, but for now, keep them nearby. The players will also receive the reserve cards that match their role, again, as found on the symbol in the top left hand corner. And then you add to these reserves the specified tokens or figures. Here, the commander is told to collect six interceptors. The central officer and chief scientist receive eight satellites and eight scientists respectively. These tokens have two sides, a refreshed and an exhausted side. Make sure they start the game on their refreshed side. And finally, the squad leader takes two of each kind of soldier and places them on their reserve cards with artwork that matches the design of the model. Now you should have two interceptors and one of each kind of soldier left over, which you'll place in this area of the board known as the recruitment pool. These are credits which represent the money and your funding in the game. These are success tokens and these are UFOs. You'll want to create a general supply of each of these and keep the game's dice nearby as well. One of the commander's starting assets is called emergency funding. And as indicated, move 10 credits from the general supply to that card. Then on the commander's officer training asset, place the four elite tokens. This is the threat track. Place the threat token on the one position and the damage token on the first space of the base damage track. These are the tech cards. They should be shuffled by the chief scientist and then placed face down nearby. The commander should shuffle the crisis deck into a face down pile. And the squad leader should do the same thing with the missions. To play the game, you will need the application, which the central officer will control. I'm going to launch the app now. This can be done from an Apple device, Android device, or your PC computer. And once the application is run, then it's time to tap play. Now we're going to tell it how many players there will be. Let's choose four and then tap next. Now we're asked for the difficulty level. There is a tutorial mode and that will give you screens of text to read at each section of the app to help guide you in your first playthrough. But if you watch this video, then you can just skip that. The other levels of increasing difficulty just give you additional challenges. For example, in easy mode, you can pause indefinitely, but in the other modes you cannot. So I'm going to choose the easy level of difficulty so I can pause as I demonstrate things in the game. There are five different types of scenarios you can play, each with a matching invasion plan card. For this video, we'll choose Occupation and put its matching two-sided invasion card with the brownish side face up here on the board. Now we'll hit next and here we see the different varieties of different alien enemies we might face in this scenario. Find all of the enemies, they have a back design that looks like this, and then sort them into piles based on their names, and return to the box any of the enemies not currently showing in the app. And then shuffle those remaining into a face down deck, which you should then place by the game board. We'll click next in the application, and now we are given our randomly chosen headquarters location, which in this case is South America. 
There are seven main locations on the board. North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, and this area known as orbit. We'll place the headquarters token in South America, and then the commander who had all of these different assets for each of the different continents will take the one for our headquarters, South America, and return the rest to the box. After tapping next, we'll see the final step of the setup. This is a layout of the current panic levels for each of the continents. Using these tokens, we will recreate the pattern we saw here on the game board. And I should mention, the order of the continents within a column doesn't matter. It's their relationship across the row that's going to make a difference. And that's the setup. The goal of XCOM the board game is to complete the final mission, which is on the underside of the invasion plan. But you won't get a chance to do that until the app instructs you to flip this over. So first, you're going to need to survive a number of rounds during which you cannot allow your headquarters to be destroyed, which will happen when it reaches this level on the damage track. You will also lose if any two continents reach this extreme level of panic by the end of a round. The game is played over a series of rounds broken into two phases each, a timed phase and a resolution phase. During the timed phase, the app will indicate which player can take what action and how long they have to do it in. Now in the easy mode, you can pause and really take as long as you want, but at the higher difficulty levels, you will have a limited pool of pause time. And if you complete your action early, if you don't use up all of your pause time, the game will award you with bonuses, so there's always an incentive to take your turn as quickly and efficiently as possible. After the timed phase is the resolution phase, and this is where you will resolve the decisions that you made during the timed phase. In this video, I'm going to go over with you how to complete the timed phase, and in a follow-up video, we'll look at how to complete the resolution phase. So during the timed phase, the central officer will hold the app and read out to the players the instructions that are given out, indicating which player can take what action. After another player has completed their action, they should let the central officer know. So the central officer can complete that and then give out the next instruction. So let's go back to the app and start the timed phase and see what happens. We're back at the final screen of the setup, so I'm going to tap start. And from here, I can begin the timed phase by tapping begin round one. This little timer counting down is just giving everyone a chance to prepare themselves, and then boom, the game has started. Now I'm just going to tap on the pause in the bottom right hand corner of the screen while I explain this. At the top of the screen, we get some scrolling flavor text here, and if you notice this skip occasionally, that's due to edits I'm making in the video, not glitches in the application. There's also a graphic here for some flavor, and over here you'll notice this sort of red blinking button. You can tap this to be informed of incoming UFOs that will be placed later in the round. We see a couple are going to show up in Europe. This is something the central officer can keep an eye on while other players are taking their actions. But I'll just tap that red button again to go back. Here you'll notice this is the timer. It's paused currently, but it's showing the amount of time remaining to complete the current action. And here we see the action that should now be resolved and the player responsible for it. In this case, the chief scientist should be informed that new technologies are available. We'll see what that means in a moment, but you can tap on this area to get a rules overview of this part of the game. When you want to go back, just tap close. Notice in the bottom left hand corner of the screen here, there is a menu button. If we tap that, we get into the menu where we can adjust options, refer to the rules and the frequently asked questions and several other helpful options. And we can also tap resume here at the top to go back to the game. So let's note again, the application is telling us that new technology is available. The central officer would announce this and then the chief scientist would draw until they were holding six research cards in their hand. This means that if the chief scientist is still holding on to some research from a previous round, they should only draw as much research as is required to bring them back up to a total of six and then they should let the central officer know that they're finished. The central officer will then tap done and we'll get our next action. And I'm going to pause this as well. And I'll pause after every action. I'm not going to announce that each time, but you'll understand why the timer has stopped on the screen. We're now being told that the XCOM budget is for 11 credits. And this is an instruction for the commander. 
That player will then quickly and carefully count out that number of credits separating it from the general supply and putting it into a budget area for the XCOM team. The number of credits you receive from round to round will fluctuate, but it's particularly affected by the panic levels of the various continents. As they grow more concerned, they lose confidence in your ability as a team to address this alien invasion, and they start putting their funding into other things. Now, although the application will vary the kinds of actions and frequency of those actions from round to round, typically, drawing research and collecting your credits are the first two actions you'll see. As we head into the next action, you'll notice here in the top left-hand corner, we have a reminder of our budget on the screen. Down here, you'll also see we have a history of the past actions we've already completed. You'll notice this action has a red background. These are alien actions and will be carried out by the indicated player. In this case, the squad leader is being told there's an enemy in the base. This area of the board represents your base. To resolve this action, simply take the top card from the enemy deck and place it face up into one of these three available spaces. This represents an alien that is invading your headquarters. I should mention, if you don't complete a red alien action in time, then you'll receive a blinking warning and the words expired. This will have the amount of time you have for the next player action, and it will also start cutting into your pause time if you're playing on one of those higher difficulty levels. Now, of course, the central officer can be giving out warnings to the players. You know, I might announce, hey, we've got 10 seconds left on this action. Okay, you're down to five seconds. If you have the sound turned on, which I don't for this instructional video, you'll also get an audible warning towards the last few seconds of an action as it's about to expire. When you run out of time on a player action, then it just goes on to the next action. That's it. You don't have any more time to be doing anything. The only way you can sort of freeze time is by pausing if the application has any pause time for you to use. Tapping done, we receive a new action called Assign Research 1. Assigning research is the responsibility of the chief scientist who will have an opportunity to assign up to three different research projects over the course of a round, each of which will be assigned to one of these three spaces depending on the action that was called out. In this case, assign research one. So the scientist will now choose a research card in their hand and place it face up in the indicated space and then may assign up to three scientist tokens to these spaces. Each scientist assigned this way will improve the chances of successfully researching this technology in the resolution phase, which comes later. We will also see later that scientists may become exhausted, indicated by them being on this side and exhausted scientists cannot be assigned to research. Also, each scientist you assign to research technology is going to cost one credit from your budget. With that in mind, maybe I'll just take the scientist back for now. It's important to realize that as you spend credits during the timed phase, they're not actually removed from your budget and put into the supply. Instead, the commander needs to make a mental note or perhaps just separate the credits as they're being spent so that as the players are doing things, they can keep track of, okay, which credits have been assigned to tasks and how much do we have left over? Because if you go into a deficit, there are severe penalties. And this means that the chief scientist and really all of the players are going to want to stay in communication with the commander to make sure that they're not overspending to do all of the various tasks that they want to complete. Just to wrap up assigning research, as we'll see later, it's possible that technology you've assigned to a location will not be successfully researched. And at the end of a round, the scientists that were there will be removed. So in a future round, when told to assign research to space one, you may choose to replace it. Simply remove the research that's there, put it into a discard pile, and put new technology in its place. Or alternatively, leave the old research there, and then once again, choose how many scientists you'd like to assign. Now that we've assigned research, we'll tap done. And now we've been given another alien instruction. So we'll pause here, and the central officer, the one holding the application, is being told that UFOs are detected. And they're shown here on the map in exactly the location that we were forewarned about, two UFOs in Europe. To complete this action, we'll take two UFOs from the supply and place them in Europe. Now tapping done, 
We're told there's a crisis, and this is an action for the commander, who will immediately draw two crisis cards to examine, and then choose one of them to keep, placing it face down in the crisis area here, and the other one they will discard into a face-up discard pile. The crisis that's chosen will not be resolved until later, but this gives the commander some insight into the challenges the team will need to face later. Now, of course, the commander is free to talk to the other players, get some input on the difficult choice they have to make between crisis cards, but ultimately each player is responsible for the actions that have been assigned to them, and they get the final say. And I think maybe this is a good time to talk a little bit about the philosophy of the game, if you will. Each player is really encouraged to feel empowered in the role that they've been given. And I'll give you an example of this. If you're the scientist, at the beginning of the game, you drop your six technology cards, and then immediately put them down, and then engage in a lengthy conversation with the commander over which crisis card they should be picking, of course, in an effort to help them out, you're actually probably not helping that much because it means when it comes around to your turn and it's time to assign research, you're not ready. Instead, you should be looking through your technology cards while other people are working on their tasks, and you should be trying to figure out what do we want to research first? How many scientists do I want to assign there? And does it look like there's going to be enough credits in the budget to pay for this? And that way, really, you are the best person for the job that you've been given because you can give the attention to it that it deserves. So that's something to keep in mind. Of course, as you play the game, there'll be opportunities for the team to communicate, to coordinate, and work together because it is very much a cooperative game. You will win and lose together. But it's just important to determine when the right time is to distract yourself from your own tasks and assist somebody else. All right, with the crisis chosen, we'll tap done. And now the squad leader is being told to choose a mission. That player will draw two missions from this deck, examine them both, and assign one to the mission space here, face up, and then discard the other. Now, it is possible that there will already be an active mission here from a previous round. If so, and you don't wish to replace it, then discard both of the newly drawn mission cards. If you do choose to replace it, discard the old mission, and return any soldiers that might have been there back to the reserves, which are located here. Each mission will have three separate tasks listed at the bottom. Some will show symbols, and others will show an outline of an empty space. For each empty space, draw the top card from the enemy deck and place it face down to fill in that area. We'll see how to resolve missions later, but when choosing one, pay special attention to the two rewards listed here, which you will gain if the mission is later completed. Before I tap done here, again, notice this blinking button. If I tap here, I get a warning about UFOs that will likely be appearing very soon in the location that they're going to go in. But for now, I'll just tap done. And sure enough, we've got some UFOs detected, but not where they indicated. So that other UFO must be coming out later. For now, we see one that's showing up in the area known as orbit. And look at this, I forgot to pause. And so I've been told that my time has expired. Again, this is the orbit area, and that's where I'll put the UFO. This action being expired is gonna cut short some of the time we'd have for one of our future actions. I'll hit done here. And now we're being told to assign research to. I'm gonna pause. And as you can see, certain actions repeat during a round. And for ones that we've already gone over, I'll just update the board off screen and hit done. But be careful, some actions which repeat, like this assign research action, will specify a new space for the research. In this case, space two. So our scientist has let us know they've completed this action. We'll hit done. Now we're being told to assign UFOs, one to North America, one to South America, and now I'll hit done. Now it's time to deploy squad to the mission. And this needs to be done by the squad leader. First, the squad leader flips face up any face down enemies on the mission card, and then assigns up to four soldiers from their reserves, which are on these cards, to the mission. So I'm gonna pick a sniper, a heavy, and I think a support as well. Now you can never have more than four soldiers on a single mission, and each soldier you assign to a mission will cost one credit from the budget. Something else for the commander to keep track of. Also, in later rounds, once the app has instructed you to flip over the invasion plan mission, you may assign up to four soldiers to it at this time as well. There are four different types of soldiers, and we'll learn more about the importance of the different types as you choose them for missions 
when we talk about resolving missions in the resolution phase video. All right, let's get our next action. Oh, this one says it's another enemy in the base. So the squad leader is flipping over a top enemy from the enemy deck and putting it face up there. We'll tap done. And now emergency funding is available. And this is for the commander, and this is great news. Here we see the original 11 credits that were given to the commander for the budget. And this player has very smartly been separating out the credits that are currently assigned to expenses, like scientist tokens and soldiers. And here's what remains unassigned. Now, when you receive emergency funding, the commander may take any number of credits from the emergency funding asset and add it to their budget for the round. Now, keep in mind two things. Any unspent credits are lost at the end of the round, and this emergency funding asset is not automatically replenished. So once you remove credits, it's very hard to get them back into the emergency funding. That said, this commander is concerned about the spending of the team and so is going to take an additional five credits for the budget. All right, let's hit done and see what we're being hit with next. More UFOs have been detected, this time in South America, so I'll place one there and hit done. And now it's time to deploy interceptors. And this is the job of the commander, who at a cost of one credit each may assign up to three interceptors to each of the different continents. And these will be used to fight the UFOs at those locations during the resolution phase. Right now we can see there are no threats in Australia, Asia, and Africa, but some could appear there later. However, this commander has decided to put two interceptors in Europe and Two in North America, leaving South America, where our headquarters are, undefended. But don't worry, the players have a plan, and we'll see that in just a moment. Do keep in mind, you do not place interceptors into orbit. These spaces are for satellites, and we'll see that in a moment. We're ready to receive our next instruction, and we're told to defend the base. And this is a command for the squad leader. Now, any number of soldiers may be deployed from the reserves to the base area here, and these will be used to fight the enemies that are invading the base. And we'll go over once again why you might choose certain soldiers in the resolution phase. And of course, each soldier that you choose costs one credit. Now this action is done, and now we're being told to assign research to position three. The scientist doesn't have to research technology, and even if a card is put in that position, they don't have to assign any scientists to it. Now we're being told to deploy satellites, and this is done by the central officer. Now up to three unexhausted satellites, those on this side of the token, not this one, can be placed into orbit at a cost of one credit each. And like all of these other tasks, the more resources you throw at a threat, the greater chance you have of success. But the central officer is feeling conservative around the budget and is only going to put one satellite into orbit. We'll say done to this task, and we're being told it's the ending of the timed phase. If you're playing on the higher difficulty levels, you will now have an amount of time equal to your unused pause time to take actions with your personal asset and tech cards. We haven't really discussed the personal asset cards yet, so let's quickly look at those now. There are two types, ones that can only be used in the timed phase that show this symbol, and those that can only be used during the resolution phase which have this symbol. As long as you're in the right phase, you may use assets at any time, regardless of the action currently being resolved by the application, so long as you can pay the costs. For example, if an asset says to place something on it, then you must have those items to place. The central officer can place satellites on the satellite nexus in order to move one UFO on the board into orbit, or to a continent that has not fallen into panic. So let's say, for example, that the central officer placed two of their satellites here and then moved two UFOs, perhaps from South America where there's no interceptors to fight them, and placed them into different continents, as long as those continents haven't reached the final orange space of the panic track. So although I'm showing you this at the end of the timed phase, just remember, the central officer could have used that asset at any point during the timed phase. Also, scientist tokens, satellite tokens, soldiers and interceptors that you place off of the board on assets to trigger their effects don't cost you anything out of your budget. If an asset says to exhaust it, that simply means to turn it 90 degrees and then you get to resolve its effect. 
you will not be able to use this asset again during a round until it's refreshed, which means it's turned upright. This normally happens at the end of each round, but some effects can cause that to happen sooner. Let's take a moment though and talk about the officer training asset since it has its own unique tokens. You'll see after exhausting, you can then place one soldier from the reserve here. Now soldiers are controlled by the squad leader, but this is actually an asset for the commander. So those two players may want to talk about whether or not to use this asset during a round. Let's say the squad leader volunteers this assault soldier, putting it here. Then it will become elite, which means you take one of these tokens and put it into the base of that model. Of course, to use this effect, you would have had to have exhausted the card. We'll talk about the value of having an elite soldier in the next video. If an asset requires you to discard salvage, then you must have salvage to get rid of. We'll learn about how you gain salvage from the enemies you defeat in the resolution phase video. In easy mode, players have unlimited time to use their time phase assets, and then when they're ready, they can tap done. And now, prepare to enter the resolution phase by tapping proceed. It might be good to note here that if you quit the application while playing, it will ask you if you want to resume from where you left off the next time you open it. And that's how you play the timed phase of XCOM the board game. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. And in a follow-up video, I'll go over the resolution phase as well. So I hope you'll subscribe and join us. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.